I'm so glad she got me to breathe before I came up here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, universe, for setting me up for that. I appreciate that. And I'm not surprised I had some technological issues, as I often do, um, when I feel a lot of energy. And I want to thank every one of you from my heart, truly, to be part of my tribe. <laughs> I started this journey in Baden-Baden with a core group in here. Um, BRMI was already in existence, and a group of about 12 of us in 2018 went to kind of reignite bioregulatory medicine. And I remember standing on that edge of that table on that Sunday night where Jerry got us kicked out of the restaurant. And um, I remember standing there and just thanking every one of them for being part of my journey, that I'd put this into my creation now 25 years ago. And my dream was to be able to teach practitioners and doctors, not being a doctor, how the body really works. Because I've been through my own story. I've been through my own journey. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> and what I really felt was very, fuck, very stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and um, when I was introduced to energy by Ian, which the reason Ian Kennedy is not speaking this weekend is because he's an amazing father, an amazing husband, and is supporting our family with our transition of moving our home two days before I left for 12 days to be here with you all and to be doing all these things that I get the opportunity to do with Christine in changing medicine, in changing the future, as she said, which is now. I wanted to be a doctor because my father had Hodgkin's. And I remember growing up in a house, see if you can remember, any of you can remember living like this in the last couple years. Am I gonna get it? Am I gonna die if I get it? And how the hell do I prevent it? And I remember living in that my entire life. Because when you have a father that has Hodgkin's disease and you watch him go in and out of the hospital and get chemo and radiation, you have no idea when that gun's going off on you. Nobody can tell you where it comes from until you get introduced to bioregulatory medicine. And then you start to understand how the body really works. And my husband was the first introduction to that through energetic vibrational medicine when I was 23 years old. And I remember asking him, like, I've been to the neurologist and the orthopedic specialist and the pain specialist and the support groups and the Reiki specialist and all the people, the massage therapist, the physical therapist. Did I leave anybody out? I did all that. I was eating frozen peas and raisins around Cornell University because I had a hypnotherapist tell me it was going to work. I did it because I wanted it. I didn't want to live in pain. In that car accident that I was in my first year at Cornell, um, I was lacerated in my spleen. I have a 12 inch scar on my head from being scalped and I compressed two vertebrae. In that same year, my father ended up having two strokes and dying. And I remember <laughs> lifting my head up and going, I don't think they have it figured out. And three years ago, three years later when I met Ian and he did some energetic release on me, honest to God, my, my pain went away. And the Vicodin, the Flexerol I was on, I could start to wean off of. And I went back to his office and I said, how do you do that? And he goes, energy. And he, for those of you who know him, he was fully satisfied by that answer. And I was fully dissatisfied by that answer because I just had a four year, very expensive piece of paper from Cornell and had no idea what the hell he was talking about. And then I said, how do I maintain this? How do I make sure it doesn't come back? I don't care if you hypnotize me. I don't care if you're a cult. I don't care. I just don't want that body pain to come back. How do I keep it from not coming back? You know what he said? B. <laughs> I was like, do you have a different language than I have? What does that mean? What do you want me to do? You want me to... And Ian has taught me, and come on, his name is Ian for this group. Is that not funny? It's spelled I-A-N. Thank you, Jess. But that's funny. Come on, it means charge particle, and he is. So Ian is a source of energy and taught me how energy really works. And I, w I saw it clinically, but I couldn't understand how it was working until, thank God, bioregulatory medicine came in my life. And we saw dark field microscopy and CRTs and HRVs, and I was like, oh, we can quantify this energy. I'm so excited. So. That's what started this whole thing. I've been very blessed to have so many of you as my colleagues and my friends and to see me without those letters behind my name. 
even though I had to create some for Jerry because he was very frustrated, so I made some. They're called <laughs> MEBI, Medical Intuitive Biological Investigator. And I want you to understand, I mean no disrespect when I call Dr. Odell James, Jerry, Jerry, Dr. Caratola Jerry, Dr. Christine Christine. These are my best friends, these are my family. So please know that I mean doctor in front of them. They deserve that doctor. I certainly, though, with pride say I'm a maybe, a medical intuitive biological investigator. I made it up. So, Fasha Fairy, lymph queen. So, and, and I'm very honored to co-host the summit this year on Fascia, co-host it with Siobhan Sarna, who's done a lot in our industry to educate people. And I'm very excited about talking about Fascia. And Christine did such an amazing job talking about it. So I'm really uh, hopeful that this catches you up on some of the clinical aspects of what it looks like on an everyday basis. Can somebody get me a, just a little bit of water? So what we're gonna go over today is what is bioregulatory medicine? And why is it different? I think you probably already understand that, but I'm going to summarize it really quick. Uh, what is bioregulatory testing and why is it important? I get this a lot in my clinic. So being a non-doctor, having people come to us and call us from all over the world that have been to all the other doctors, just like you all see, they've been to all the clinics, they've done all the tests, they've done all the lab work. Why are we different and why would they want to come here? what the lymph is and why it's imperative, I'm gonna ask you to reframe. Even my veteran bioregulatory practitioners and doctors, I'm gonna ask you to reframe today. How are the lymph and fascia related? A little bit about coherence and quantum because Christine did an amazing job on that and I knew she was. And how proper regulation allows for our regenerative capacity and brings us into coherence. Christine and I obviously have a very deep relationship <laughs> and we really want people to understand that coherence is regulation, that these are the same. One of the things she constantly does when she speaks is she gets people to understand language because we often get confused about what that all is. And to that point, allopathic integrative functional. What's bioregulatory? How many of you have ever heard that? And oh, is it like functional? And I'm like, no, it's not. And it's for me, allopathic is, I'm not gonna get upset with a medical doctor when they studied medicine, and then I go to them and they give me medicine. Can we stop giving them a hard time about that, please? That's what they studied. They studied pharmacy. They're gonna administer pharmacy. Don't be surprised. When you go to a surgeon, guess what they're gonna probably recommend? Surgery. If you want a holistic, comprehensive approach, then go to a doctor, a practitioner that has studied all of the things that you are looking for. So please stop getting frustrated at them. I had, to, I had to heal that in my heart as well. Integrative is awesome because now I'm gonna take that allopathic model, I'm gonna integrate that into, oh, maybe not just some drugs, here's some, some herbs and some nutritional support. And then functional, I'm gonna look at not just your lab work and is, are you within range, but can I optimize your range? Can I get everything really highly functional? And what I'm going to ask you to do is look at the, ex like totally, okay, that's a street, go down the corner on the left and turn around, and there's bioregulatory medicine. It's a complete different expansion of these concepts, because it doesn't forget what you've all learned, it just applies it to a different framework so that the effect and the result you get is much bigger, because we are not looking at how well those organs function, we're looking at how well the innate intelligence is functioning to tell those organs how to function. And every one of these presenters that I am honored to share, share the stage with, from Dr. Tom to Marlene to Dr. Odell tomorrow, or today, tomorrow, and Sharon, they all have told you this already, that it, this is about cleaning up this terrain, letting this biofield heal us, and let all the other things just happen. You can support them with all the other ways that you know to do, but watch the magic happen and watch it accelerate when you take into account the autonomic nervous system. And for my veterans, I want, you I want you to understand a little bit more about the fascia and the lymph. And I appreciate Jerry giving me credit for the tonsils because I would love every dentist on the planet to start injecting tonsils every time somebody walks in their door. I would also love every dentist to do nasotherapies. 
I don't want RADA and I to be the only two clinics in the United States that do nasotherapies, for God's sakes. Let's have everybody doing that. Let's clean up this mucosal lining and get these pe patients to heal faster. Let's have flow prezos in those studios so that they can dump their lymph and get into a parasympathetic state so that we're really paying attention to that terrain, which is their fascia and their lymph. And then what other ever subspecialty we have, we can really accentuate because they're more in a receptive mode. You know, flow prezos we don't have FDA approval yet, so I can't stand here and tell you that it's going to help your lymph and your fascia yet. When I have FDA approval, I'll be happy to tell you that. But in the meantime, what I'm going to tell you is that it's an incredible opportunity and device to force you into a parasympathetic state. I had done all the Joe Dispenza work. I had read all the books. I had done Esther Hicks. I had been in meditation for 25 years asking nine, when do I see the freaking wizard behind the curtain? And it wasn't until I met Rasmus and Sound of Soul on our fateful trip in November of 18 when I got to experience being. And it was at that very same time frame that Desiree was creating Flo Prezzo in New Zealand because we were frustrated with how much people weren't getting into a relaxed state. And she understood regulation at that point because she had been involved with bioregulatory medicine. And she created an amazing device that did exactly what she needed me to do, force me into regulation because she wanted to work with me. And she knows me well enough to know I need to calm her ass down. And so I need to get her into some parasympathetic state. And so <clears throat> the point is, though, for all of the therapies, if all of us can really reframe and look at the fascia and the lymph and understand that that really is our terrain and understand that the point of everything we're doing is getting that client into receptive mode and letting the innate intelligence take over and let us look like the wizards and the witches of which we are. <laughs> Okay, I'm done, no. So how can I assist the body is the question I want you to ask every day. How can I assist the body to heal? I had a client reframe me a couple years ago. Uh, she's an amazing woman, she had CRPS. She was referred to me by somebody that Dr. Pascal had linked me up and she deals with that diagnosis all day long. I give Katinka a lot of credit. It's one of the worst diagnoses, I think. And these, a lot of these women um, commit suicide that get this, if you don't know, chronic reflex pain syndrome. So this young girl was dealing with it. Long story short, she had come to our center after going to Katinka's and getting a lot of therapy. She came to us to do more fascia, lymph, and emotional work. And she changed. She also admitted uh, to us and to her family and outed her abuser, her sexual abuser in her life. And she changed. And when I was talking to her, her name is Sarah, it's not the Sarah that's here with me now, but when I talked to Sarah one night, I said, can I ask you, there was a lot going in my business and I was raw and vulnerable. And I said, I just wanna know from a patient's perspective, like what are we doing wrong? She goes, you know, I and you talk about all the time. Your body can do it, your body can do it. But the second we get better, you wanna take credit. I was like, fuck, <laughs> you're right. That's my ego. I need to put it to bed because this is not about what I'm doing. This is about the, and Ralph taught me how to pray after I do neural therapy or after we do a healing and put my hands on the body and give gratitude to that amazing innate intelligence because it is the only thing in the body that heals. And I don't do neural therapy because I'm not a medical doctor, but when we had neural therapy at our office and we had medical doctors, I was often gifted to be able to do that um, under their license. And when I started doing that, when Ralph taught me to pray, it changed the responses I was getting drastically. My father taught me about physical medicine was broken. My mother, 82 years old, mouthful of amalgam fillings, was in COVID, had COVID last year, hospitalized, was put on rendenzafir, obese, diabetic, thinks I'm a massage therapist, doesn't understand what I do at all. I flew up when I was informed that she was put in the hospital, and my brother said, you're never going to be able to get in, you're not vaccinated. I said, yes, I will. Watch me. And I got on to that hospital floor, I hugged, I kissed her, I put her on Sound of Soul, I gave her lymph flow cream, insomnium, and liposomal glutathione, gl uh, liposomal vitamin D, liposomal vitamin D, and her CRP went from 96 to 56 the next day. She walked out of that hospital five days later and she's still alive. Yeah. <clears throat> 
I do think my mother's a long hauler. I do see what's happening with her cytokine storm, but the reality is I didn't let her die in that bed. And that is what this medicine can do for you. It can put control back into your hands to incite that human part of us, that innate intelligence of us that actually heals and connection and this community is healing. My heart is so freaking full this weekend. I said to Christine, I'm, I'm a little freaked out about this weekend. She goes, well, I'm like, I'm like in social overload. These are like all my favorite people. I don't know how we're gonna have dinners and lunches and I'm gonna be like social butterfly and thank God Bobby came. She came keeps grounding me and like putting, it's okay, just like, it's okay. Because this is, this is what heals. You know, I mean, Ian's not here because at the end of this talk, I'm gonna make us all hold hands and go kumbaya and he would not put up with that for one minute. <laughs> He'd be like, oh God, she's doing that again. So, but that is our job. Our job as practitioners is to assist the healing capacity of the body. End of story. What the foundational understandings in order for us to do that is we know that the power inside the body is the only thing that heals and that the nervous system is our physical part of this innate intelligence and that getting more into the parasympathetic allows for that flow. And our job is to remediate those blockades. What are the blockades? Scars. We're going to go more into that. External uh, stitches, surgeries, operations, as well as tattoos. Yes, Sarah, tattoos. Thank you, Water, for getting rid of all the BPA. I'm so appreciative of you. <laughs> Rasmus taught me you don't need any special equipment. You just need to talk to it. Rasmus, creator of Sound of Soul, worked with um, Masaru Emoto for 17 years and had ran his lab, the water crystal guy. And you'll all hear from Rasmus sooner than later. If you want to, you can go on to the BRMI website, go under resources, go under events, Baden Baden 2018, and you can watch his entire talk about Sound of Soul. It literally moved the room, it, and it is moving us continually to help us all open our hearts and help this world heal. There are emotional blockades. So we've always talked about two blockades to healing in bioregulatory medicine. Last year, I added two more. Deep emotional blockades had to be called out since COVID hit because it's so clear that deep emotional rigid belief systems will absolutely cause blockades in the system. And I don't know why we never talked about subluxations of the spine, because that's so key. I mean, so many of you are chiropractors. And how did we never talk about that? So here we go. There you go, David. There, it's up there. And I think. Jerry went through this quite well, and who's happy you're not a dentist? <laughs> I always wanted to be a doctor. I never wanted to be a dentist. God love you. Somehow, I feel like I work for Jerry. But when people ask me what I did for a living for a long time, I was like, I send people to biological dentists and I clean them up after. That's what I do. <laughs> what is regulatory testing and why is it important? So regulatory testing is the concept of compensation, of how well the body is compensating for the internal and external stressors. Compensation is the ability to handle our world, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And the organism is wired to survive, right? That's what we are. But we are conscious living beings. There is a physical part of us. We are vibrational beings, yes, having a physical experience, but all of life is a vibration and all of it is in motion and it creates frequencies and we're antennas to that frequency. We take in all of life's frequencies. Our heart is our frequency receiver and generator that then shifts as, our, as we breathe and changes our autonomic nervous system. How do we change our autonomic nervous system? Breathing, ready? Good job, you just changed your autonomic nervous system. You assisted it. Regulation, okay, you can read that. So regulation is harmony, compensating for chaos. Life is chaos. Dr. Tom did a great job talking yesterday about stress. I hear this all the time, I wanna manage stress. Why, why do you wanna manage stress? I don't wanna manage stress. Who wants to manage stress? Can we just process stress? Can we just live stressful and happy at the same time? Because without stress, you don't expand. I wanna expand, how about you? I wanna be bigger, I wanna grow more, I wanna experience everything. And I can't do that without a little stress. After the car accident and I got better, 
I broke my leg playing basketball, and I broke my arm doing a stupid muck fest. Why? Because I continue to work and, and have fun and live my life. I'm not like, I broke my back, and now I'm not in pain anymore, so I'm just going to sit in this chair and not do anything. I'm continuing to push and grow. I'm going to get Christine to jump out of a plane with me one day. You just watch. <laughs> so. If the body fails to regulate for long periods of time, that's when disease sets in. And when, when lack of compensation happens, the longer it happens, the easier it is for disease to set in, and that burden increases even faster. Now the terrain, the fascia, the lymph, the spaces between the cells start to signal the cells differently. Bruce Lipton is one of the masters. I remember Thomas Rao, one of the first books he ever gave us, was, or told us to read, was Biology of Belief, because let's be honest, Thomas didn't give us a book. Biology of Belief. <laughs> we love Thomas. Um, but Biology of Belief is an amazing book from Bruce Lipton, and he talks about how he did not want to go into the spiritual world. He was a cell biologist, but all of a sudden he was looking at these cells going, wait, what are they being signaled from? And he had to start to look at the spaces around the cells. And then this is how we get physiological changes. So when our cells are being signaled improperly over time periods, that's when we get these physiological changes. Now you see it in the blood. Do you understand why I look at blood work and go, oh my God, that's like the last thing that's gonna change? I don't wanna wait for that. I wanna look at what's happening. I wanna look at the balls your body's juggling, if you will, before we get to the point where it's dropping a ball and now there's a problem in your blood. But how do you test that? How, what do you look at? And that's the beauty of the quantum. That's the beauty of looking at live blood cell, looking at the space between the cells live. That's beauty of heart rate variability because that's what regulation testing does. That's what computerized regulation thermography is doing for us. It's telling us what balls the body's juggling, where it's affecting the body while the blood is managing it and creating homeostasis. So if my blood labs are great, I don't know if I'm juggling five balls or 15 balls and when that's gonna drop a ball to show something off in the blood. Regulation testing does. This is true preventative healthcare. This is showing signs and signals that are happening in your body that it's struggling with to allow you to make the correction so you never see it turn into matter. I never have worried about cancer since I learned about this medicine, not for one day. And when my 12-year-old at the time niece was diagnosed with cancer, I learned that her particular diagnosis, I called Dr. Byron Braid and I said, what is this cancer from? And he was like, oh, it's from EBV. You know, that thing I've been telling you you've had because your father had Hodgkin's disease? And that same niece of mine, who I pray is gonna watch this one day, uh, she four or five years later di was diagnosed with mono. And then she got it the next year. And then she got scarlet fever. And then she got it again. And then she finally called her crazy Aunt Kelly and said, you said this is all related. What is this about again? And she got on some l and some other things and started to address the EBV. And that's a whole nother story for another day. I'm sure that'll all come out. So regulatory testing, good history intake is number one. And connect with your client. Look them in the eyes, hear them, and hear their story. It's a, the number one rule. Do some orthostatic testing. We also, somebody touched on it yesterday, I, th I think it was Dr. Tom, um, in regards to thermography and not just the, f the pretty pictures, but the actual temperature of the skin tissue to tell how the, the organs and tissues underneath are actually responding, muscle response testing. I'm sure there's a lot more. Um, I'm just mentioning my favorites, hair mineral analysis, urine analysis, glucose analysis, live blood analysis, dark field, and biofeedback, as uh, Christine mentioned already, AO scanner, Nest Health, and iMate is something I use as immune modulation, allergy, and elimination technology. It's all looking at frequencies, assessing frequencies, and sending frequencies. Essentially, if everything was a wave where the waves aren't in coherence, sending waves that are coherent. It's pretty simple, actually. These are all the things that will affect your heart rate variability. So take a look at that while I take a sip. <laughs> um, wait, back. Whoop, whoop, back. All the things. One of my favorite people in the world says that. All the things. All the things affect your heart rate variability. 
Scars are number one. Physical and emotional scars will absolutely affect your regulation. Electromagnetic smog, sound and light. Justin Franson is here. He, I, I've been gifted to do this co-hosting of this Fascia Summit, which comes out in October, and I would love for all of you to not only be a part of it, but help promote it so we can get more people to understand about the fascia. But when I interviewed Justin for that about his EMF rocks, he introduced me to a book called Invisible Rainbow, and outside of being introduced to biology belief and bioregulatory medicine, that was probably the most exciting thing I've seen in 20 years, to explain how life and electricity are connected and to get a download of rehabbing my physics class. So it was fantastic. Um, we know dental foci, chemicals, metals, immune channels, emotional stress. You've all known this if you've done bioregulatory medicine. If not, these are the things that really get us. And what we want is flexibility. Flexibility. We all know, this is very layman's, ready? Beep, 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 EKG, really good, right? Beep, really bad, right? <laughs> so we want variability, not rigidity. And so the more flexitarianism we can become, which I'm going to talk about, that's a new word I created, create a lot of words in my life, flexitarianism is what I'm inviting you all into. Because the more rigid we are, the easier it is to break us. If you think about a little sapling tree as it's growing, right, it's got a lot of flexibility in it. The taller, the stronger, the, st the stiffer, the easier it is to break. When I was introduced to bioregulatory medicine, I was pain free, but I was not well. I had to sleep on a certain pillow. I had to, you know, this, there was a lot of things that caused me to feel well. As long as, you know, I didn't have pain, but it was like, well, I can't eat that. I can't wear that. I can't do that. I can't. There was a lot of can'ts in my life. How many have heard me say no in the last three years? Maybe to the demise of my integrator and my business, but yes, there, there's not a lot of no's that I say because I want to experience all of life. And I can because I have created enough room and space in my body to allow my body to compensate for the stressors internal and external that I decide to move forward with. Flow state is regulating my heart rate variability. So how do we improve it? We get out of our minds and we get into our hearts and we allow. That's an entire lecture. If you don't know how to do that, I really re recommend you reach out to Joe Dispenza's work. And I don't mean read his books, because I read his books for years. And then I went to an event and my life changed. And Jerry can tell you, I went to a second event and my life continued to change and sometimes re-entry can be difficult. <laughs> but it is learning how to open yourselves up and then go back into your field and take this work with you every day. As Ayn would say, it's not about sitting in meditation, it's living to be meditative. So he's here, right here. Um, a good HRV is going to say that we regulate well. We're all connected. And the more connected we are, the more we regenerate. Everybody says, let's go out into nature. You are nature. We're all nature. You don't have to go outside to be anywhere. Just be with yourself, your nature. And it's best, yes, if you're attached to the rest of nature or connected to other humans. That's very fabulous. But don't forget that we're all connected, and that helps us regenerate. The heart is interacting with every single thing around you. It creates this field around our heart, and the heart is the connector of our environment. And like a pendulum, it's not esoteric. This is how the heart actually works. I'm not gonna play this and take the time, but you'll have this link. Do you all know about the metronome experiment and how it creates synchronization. You can set metronomes in a room to be all separate, and within just a few moments, they will all synchronize. Why do we have to get us all in person together to help us all synchronize together, to bring us all together, to have the same information and to work as a group like a flock of birds out there taking this information and enveloping the rest of the world, bringing them into the light, into their hearts and getting them to understand what really heals. That's what a collective group of, a collective, a collective network of observers does. And then, Further, I talk about the uh, Fibonacci series, and this is 
Rasmus' entire presentation, I did in one slide and say, go watch his presentation, go understand Fibonacci is the golden ratio, how all of nature is represented, representative of the synchronization in life. And it is such a beautiful thing. So you can certainly watch those because you'll have the, uh, the links to those. And our cells communicate, as Christine said, through photons and phone phonons. I don't know if I'm saying that exactly right. But she'll talk about this. If you haven't done her body electric 1.0 or 2.0, these are amazing interviews where she interviewed over 40, 50 um, incredible experts in these fields to talk about that from uh, Eileen Dave McCusick, who you're going to hear from, James Hoshman. There's a lot of incredible opportunities for you to really learn. All of life is chaos and hormesis. We talked about that. It allows us to expand. Oh, I already talked about this slide, so we'll move on. Dose makes the poison. Rob Millison's a brilliant man. And I remember years ago when I first met him, I said, what are you doing these days? He's like, oh, I'm working with plutonium, seeing if I can. I was like, huh? You're doing with what? He was like, well, I'm just seeing if I can make it into a homeopathic and see if we can pull radiation out of people's bodies. And that's when I learned from the pharmacist what dose makes the poison really means. So I was like, okay, I think I really need to understand homeopathy a bit better. That was like my first bioregulatory medicine seminar. And I, I was like, wow, I've really stepped into it here. These people are great wizards and they're figuring stuff out that most people would never even take the time to understand, let alone figure out. So give your all a round of applause for being here and taking the time and energy and the devotion for trying to find a better way. Coherent light in the body gives structure to all the frequencies. In the fourth phase of water, uh, Gerald Pollack's work is exactly what um, Christine talked about that gives our body this formation that allows the structure of our body to hold on to energy and information. You know, Silicon Valley is trying to replicate nature so fast, they're looking at the mycelium network and trying to understand fiber optics. Because just if you want to know anything about mushrooms, ask James out to lunch and just say, can we talk mushrooms real quick? And you will bl bloom your mind because I thought I knew a little bit about mushrooms until you, t well, that's pretty much anything you want to talk to James about, but mushrooms in particular, he's fully fascinated with. And I'm like, the more I study fascia, the more I'm interested in mushrooms because they are the network. The fascia is the network of our body. The myceliums are the, mush are the network of our earth. Oops, oops. That, that it structures our water, and flow preservative also structures our water, and it holds the frequency of the information, and Silicon Valley, that's where I was, they're copying mushrooms and water to try to hold information. And what Harry Massey has figured out and is proving now with Dr. Hamel Patel at the University of uh, Can Southern California in San Diego is exactly that, that water does hold information. But Emoto already knew that. He's been telling us that for three decades. And Rasmus was frustrated because he couldn't figure out a way that everybody can make beautiful water crystals with their mind. It wasn't duplicatable. So as a scientist, he's like, this doesn't work. But when he figured out there's a sound that everybody's body makes, which is our heart rate, and when that frequency comes out of our heart and is played to music, played to water rather, everybody makes beautiful water crystals. Why? Because we're all from source and we're all perfect, and we're all ideal in our hearts, and we just have to breathe in and allow that to heal us. Fascia is a thin covering. Christine went through this a little bit. Um, Jean-Claude, I am not gonna try to botch his name because she did such a beautiful job, um, but Dr. Jean-Claude is amazing, and he really taught us about the architecture and the fibers of the frequency. So the fascia is really, Fiber, uh, frequency fibers laying over us that allow us to have an antenna that's hooking up to this field. And I thought I knew a little bit about the fascia. I've touched bodies for 30 years. I became a licensed massage therapist a few years ago because I was like, hey, if I'm touching bodies, maybe I should get a license to touch bodies. So I, I've been touching bodies for all these years, and I knew a lot about fascia and lymph through my own case. I have a 12-inch scar on my head. <laughs> you know, they, it I was scalped. We injected my scar. I'm able to stand here with heels with no pain. I got an inch and a half of my height back. I get fascia. So I thought until I started interviewing 30 experts in fascia. 
and reading all the books about fascia and touching people in a way that I had never touched and felt before in my life. And the field is active inside of us. And you can simply feel it by just laying your hands on somebody. And you can feel the access to this code and this information and how by just holding space for somebody allows their entire body to reorganize and to flow. And the miracles that happen, the, the things that Sarah and I get to feel every day under our hands is magical. I will never take credit for it again. I just am humbled and honored to facilitate it in humans and now animals. I do it to my own dog and my friend's horses, but I'm going to start to work with animals. I switched from pre-med to pre-vet, by the way, when I was in Cornell, so I was like really attracted to your work. So fascia uh, maintains the balance and the tension of the elasticity. I mean, structurally on a physical plane, that's really what it does, right? It's made of collagen, it holds our structural, uh, our structure it holds microtubules um, that really where the photons, the electrons, the phonons all circulate through these nanotubules as, um, sorry Jess, was I in your way? Uh, as, as Christine said that, um, I forgot what she said because Jess got me distracted. It's okay. I was so zen in the moment with Jess. It'll come back to me when it's important. Lymphatic vessels lie within the fascia. Oh, the endothelial glycocalyx. That's what I was going to say. It's all about the endothelial glycocalyx. I don't know why that didn't just come off my tongue like that. But it's really important to understand how our cells are communicating with the fascia and how the fascia is connected to every aspect of us. And our fascia is connected to every aspect of the living microbiome, the living matrix that, of which we are finding that we live in. The fascia through moment through movement, which is applied mechanical stress, creates this electrical charge known as the piezoelectric effect. This helps create a magnetic field, which happens to be six feet away from us, around us, um, that helps create this frequency of each individual. So there's a lot of people that talked about this, as Christine said, James Oshman's book, Energy Medicine is a Must, as I believe as well, um, Eileen Day McCusick's book, Electric Health, Electric Body. They're definitely my favorites. And I had to give a shout out to Invisible Rainbow because Arthur Forsberg has quickly become one of my favorites. And the hydration of our fascia really helps conduct this electricity. You know, it is the highway of, and it dumps the water in the body. So really it's the conductor of electricity and the water irrigation system. The movement allows for this natural pumping. And I wanna create a movement for the fascia and the lymph. Did anybody else get my pun? <laughs> I want to create a movement, and I really do mean I want to create a movement for the fascia and the lymph. It is very frustrating, and I appreciate all your referrals. And being on summits and podcasts is awesome, and it also is a lot when all these people from all over the world go, great, who in your area does what you do? Uh, nobody. So we need to change that. There are some great practitioners out there that do some great fascia and lymph work, and I'm diving into those networks. But we need better training, and we need those practitioners to understand this work. A lot of the people that are trained in the standard myofascial lymphatic work or massage therapists and physical therapists, they have no idea how much they're actually affecting the regulation of the body, and they don't understand this medicine. We need to bring these two worlds together. And that's what we're here to do, is network to bring these the body workers and the doctors, as Sarge said so eloquently, we need to get state out of it and we need to allow us to determine our own future in healthcare and that's individualized. There's eight, in eight million-ish people, there's eight million-ish protocols and there's eight million authorities. Rasmus teaches a lot about language. Authority means from self. I don't know how that got so disoriented. Authority means from self. Get connected back to self, take a breath. You will never have a question of how to move forward when you connect to self. So move, and your lymph will move. And when your lymph moves, your emotions move. Because many of us have read the book, The Body Bears the Burden, or what's the other one? Emotion, um, body keeps the score, thank you. And body keeps the score. We know that the issue is in the tissues. Desiree and I have been saying it for 20 years. The issue's in the tissues. 
And I love virtual practice. I love it. And COVID has been fantastic for helping us be more efficient and effective. I love that I don't have to send clients all the way into Manhattan to see Jerry to do a consult. They can just do it over the phone. But, you know, he can't do the amalgam remediation over the internet. He hasn't figured that out yet. And I cannot move the issues out of their tissues. <laughs> He's working on it. And I can't move the, the, the tissues unless I put hands on the body or unless they're able to get into a suit like the Flow Prezzo and allow their body to move that tissue. So I encourage all of you that have a virtual practice to really look at, could I create a studio where I just allow access to great technologies to allow people to upregulate their systems? You know, we started a, a little studio about six or seven years ago and it was way before it's time. People would be walk in and be like, what's this PMF thing I'm doing? Why is this important? Why am I sitting in the sauna why am I doing this and I was just like oh my god you take them to the gym they feel better you put them through a bio I don't like the word biohacking but bioregulatory upregulating system and they're like I don't know why do I feel better I don't know but look at your HRV see it okay great come back tomorrow we'll see you again and when you can show them on heart rate variability you can show them but markers they start to see it then they'll start to feel it then they'll stay motivated and they'll be your lifelong clients Lifelong clients are people like Tom said, Dr. Tom said, where they know what they need and they know how to access you and they will never leave you because you've changed how they live their life. They're not lifetime clients coming back to you every time they have a problem. They've changed their life and they're recruiting for you. They're telling everybody they know they have control over their health. When COVID hit, they didn't get scared and put a mask on. They knew how to en enhance their own immunity. They knew to go outside and ground. They knew to eat their vitamin C and get fresh air and communion with their friends. They knew how to hug seven people a day like Jack Zach Bush taught us. So we increase our microbiome. We don't distance ourselves. We expose ourselves to create hormesis to expand. My son was not vaccinated. I've been trying to get him to get the chicken pox <laughs> for nine years. <laughs> And if anybody has chicken pox, please send me a sucker with chicken pox and give him chicken pox. Because I don't want him to get it when he's too old. It's raining because spirit is moving. It always rains when I'm in the desert, brother, always. So the charge created by our fascia is the fluid of our regulation. Our charge is created by our fascia. And the strength of the frequency, Bobby's got to stop doing what she's doing, um, is dependent on our regulation. So... A deeper look, definitely, Jean Claus has a deeper look. And The Living Matrix, it's a beautiful movie if you haven't seen it, but I highly recommend getting his book because then you have access to way more videos. And I'm an anatomy geek, although, Marlene, I'm an anatomy geek, but you and Jerry really put my stomach into a position where I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'm not an anatomy geek, but I really love his work and, and looking at the fascia live because Gil Headley, who's another gentleman that I've been fortunate enough to um, study with and to interview, he, he's one of the most interesting people I've ever met in my life. So when, when I interviewed him for the fascia summit, anybody seen the fuzz speech? Right? Love the fuss speech. I, I had it on my website. I didn't know it was a 20 year old video. I finally get to interview him, and, and he starts telling me how his whole life started as a PhD in ethics and divinity. And I was like, oh. He's like, but you know, I didn't really understand how it applied. So I wanted to become a body worker to understand how all this work I was studying in divinity and ethics applied to the human body. So I started doing fascia work. And he took some rolfing classes. And then it made him so fascinated that he's been dissecting bodies for 27 years. And the best line ever in the fascia summit when he said, yeah, Kelly, I realized that studying divinity and ethics and working in fascia, it was the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, huh, can we unpack that for the next hour? And he was my first interview of that fascia summit. And boy, did he set me up. Because for the next two to three months as I did those interviews, I was like, oh, it was right here. And for some reason, I kept missing it. And I get it now. And on Flow Prezzo, when, when uh, Desiree created it, she had mode one, mode two. Mode two is more about holding, and it's more with a, when we have FDA approval, I can tell you it's more about the fascia, but it's about finding where those holding patterns are in our body. And fascia holds all of our traumas. When I had my scar injected for the first time, 
some of you were actually in the room. Sharon was there. I, uh, I had my scar injected um, at one of our clinical trainings. And I had a jaw worked on, and I had a Frankenhoiser because he wanted to show clinically how this worked. And I went outside and took all my clothes out off and laid on the ground for about 30 minutes because I was like, I just need to be on the ground, and I don't know why. I needed to ground. There was a lot of excess energy in that scar. I didn't know instinctively what I was doing, but I knew what I needed to do. I think David was there too. And I went outside, and I just laid on the ground, and I allowed my body to recalibrate. In hindsight, I understood that. At the time, my husband was like, what the hell is going on? Why are you standing out here naked on the ground? I don't know. I just need to. But the fascia fabric is waves of energy, and it holds this energy. And when he released that scar, a lot of stuff came up for me emotionally. And it took me a long time to unwind that. I went through what we call a healing crisis because he told me to go on all these homeopathics. But I was brand new in the company, and I, I, or brand new in this industry, and we didn't have heal yet. And he told me to take five heal remedies, and we opened our account. And it was going to take three, three weeks for it to get to me. And in the meantime, I retraced. And I went through this huge unwinding. And I understood unwinding of the body and how we need to support the body so it doesn't need to go through a Herxheimer. Thank you for saying that. Herxheimer is one of the vocabulary words I would like to squash along with fibromyalgia. Herxheimer is just your lymph isn't working and your practitioner doesn't know what the hell to do. Life is change in motion. That's the best definition I've ever heard. Life is change in motion. If you don't think you're going to change, you don't think you're going to have motion, then get ready to die. Because those are the two things that are constant. And when we feel we are stuck and we are hardened and we are rigid, then we probably, a lot of people and a lot of our clients have felt that way. And we're constantly battling against our chronic illness and our, we are dealing with our fascias holding on to it. And we need to learn how to let that go. Letting go is what the lymph has been known for. Letting go. Dr. Kotka is an amazing doctor here locally that uh, gifted us with her presence at our last retreat. On the last day of the retreat, we offer for these women to come in and do uh, Mino Autoheme which is basically taking a little of their blood with a little ozone and giving it back to them. And she brought some homeopathics. And it felt like Christmas to me because she walked in with these beautiful boxes of cerebrum comp and ubiquinin and engastol and lymphomasa, things I haven't seen in years. And I was like, oh my god, where'd you get those beautiful remedies? And she said, these remedies spoke to me. They were here. These are plants. They have emotions. They have feelings. They have energies. And these are the ones that wanted to come here today and show themselves to you. And one of the most beautiful things she ever said, I felt, was that lymph is not just about letting go. Lymph is about stepping into who we are. We can't let step into who we are until we let go of the filters that people have told us who we are. My biggest fear in life was public speaking. <laughs> I get you, Nisha. I don't know where you are, but when I first public spoke for the first time, I was supposed to do an intro for Ian, and I got up and said, hi, I'm Kelly. This is Ian. <laughs> that was it. It was supposed to be 15 minutes. I'm very comfortable in front of this room now because it is my heart, and I need to help everybody to understand how the body really works, and that over overrides any sympathetic nervous system even though I'm constantly thirsty and dry mouth. <laughs> it overrides that because I know how important this message is. Really? OK. Five minutes? OK. So it, it, but it does. It overrides that message. So I'm going to go through for five minutes quickly what this looks like. Oh, wait. Ooh. You saw it? So Dr. Jess, I give her a lot of credit. Dr. Jess is a medical doctor who wrote so many letters of vaccination exemptions in the state of California that they came after her attacking her in this last year. She didn't, it wasn't necessarily for what she's done in the last couple of years. It was prior to that in years past. But the bottom line is when they want you, they're going to come and get you if they want to, right? And Dr. Jess is a disruptor. And she's an educator. <laughs> And I saw Dr. Jess speak first on the cell core stage, and I was like, holy crap, she talks faster than I do. And she's wicked smart. And then I had an opportunity to meet her the day after she was given a letter uh, for the state of California letting them know that, letting her know that she was on probation. And she was crushed. And Christine and I were sitting next to each other, we're like, 
good job, Jess. You're in good company. You're disrupting people. That's awesome. And she was crying, and we're like, oh, she doesn't understand her community. She doesn't know that she's part of the bioregulatory medicine community. We have to go show her that she's got a whole group of people here ready for her that are like, yeah, keep disrupted, keep educating, keep telling the people what they want to know, which is how their body really works. <laughs> Nobody with a white coat needs to tell me how my body needs to work. And so we taught Jess scar therapy. And then I watched one of her Instagram lives. And she's on some stage somewhere teaching a bunch of doctors. And Jess goes, you got to treat that scar stat. <laughs> and I was like, that is the best form of stat use I've ever heard. Because I know we talk about scar therapy, and we talk about it, and we talk about it. But I want to reframe you on scar neural therapy and how darn important it is. There could be clinics that do nothing but scar neural therapy and change people's lives. And you don't treat that scar once. I treated that scar the first time 15 years that year. Every time I saw Byron or any of my friends, I'm like, can we, can we inject my scar? And then I had James do Sujok, and I've had fascia work on it, and I've RRT'd it, and I've treated that scar so many different ways every single year. It doesn't matter because it became from a big scar, it, any scar, it cannot be overstated. They create do, detours on this information highway. They create electrical excess of sympathetic nervous system fiber overload, and it does not matter the location, and it does not matter the size, and it does not matter the age. All scars need to be treated on the physical body. And then we are going to talk about deeper and how it goes. So there's so many ways to treat scars, but she's right. I use lymph flow cream like it's my job because it makes such an impact. I've seen the difference on live blood. I don't say this because Christine's my friend. I say this because Christine's my friend because of her products and because of who she is, because of the quality of the person she is and how she runs her business and how she treats her patients is why Christine and I are friends. And same with Jerry. His toothpaste has changed my life. So there's a lot of ways to get scars. And I just, oh, come on, God, really? Five minutes left and we haven't done this yet. Okay, lymph. There's a lot to know about lymph. I have a three-day mini course. You need to buy that so you can learn more about lymph. But please know this. You, we have three times approximately more. You have five liters of blood, but you have 12 to 14 liters of lymphatic fluid. I might be the lymph queen, but you have the lymph goddess in the room. Desiree Despong is the lymph goddess. I learned most of what I know about lymphatics from Desiree. She is magical in many ways. And I'm so honored she flew all the way here from New Zealand to be part of this because she knows this is the movement. She did not want to miss this event. And we applaud her. For, she definitely traveled to Florida, without a doubt. And she knows you are the group to get her flow prezzo out there into the masses. She knows that you guys understand that better than anybody. You guys, y'all, I'm from Philly, y'all know it better than every, anybody about regulation and about the lymph and the fascia. So that's our lymph system. If you don't know what it looks like, it's absolutely amazing. There we have between 600 and 1,000 lymph nodes. You've got to drain the glymphatics. We always knew there was glymphatics. Now they're proving it. It's everywhere. This is a nerve cell. These are your lymph spaces. It's everywhere, and it's connected to the fascia. That's how I became a lymph drainage, that's how I became lymph queen, CRT. Everybody had lymph problems, no, nothing out there worked, and I kept finding things that needed to work. I'm a compliance queen as well. I, I just want things that make cl clients compliant. I would sit around campus and eat frozen peas and raisins, but I know most people aren't gonna do that. So I need people that are gonna do something that's easy, simple, and works. So we're going we're gonna to go through this really fast because I have five minutes left. <laughs> but I want to get to how this works in clinical practice because you've talked a lot about it. And I'm not a doctor, so I'm going to share with you how, what happens when clients come to our clinic. So there's your flow prezzo again and the three things that it does. So these are things that we have people do at home because it's also about home. Sinclair's liver flush is Amazing, completely compliant, helps people tremendously. Castor oil packs, for sure. 
So here's a history of a woman who had asthma, allergies, medication since she was 10, history of acne since she was 17, family history, her father at Hodgkin's, motor vehicle accident, guess who this is? 12, 20 years old, scalped, wisdom teeth removed three weeks after my MVA, 30 ovarian cysts birthed, uh, burst one month uh, started after the car accident. I lived on painkillers and muscle relaxers. Felt like I was 90 when I was 20. That's so freaking true. Uh, and then I found this medicine at 23. And by 23 and a half, I was pain free and drug free. I was on a lot of minerals and herbs and all sorts of bags of stuff, but I was pain free. And for the next 10 years, stayed pain free, no particular symptoms, just, you know, chiropractic massage, acupuncture, constantly working on my alignment, inconsistent cycles, but no other symptoms. And then I found bioregulatory medicine. I did all of these tests. We worked on cell deficient bacteria, including EVV. I had one amalgam for five years. We had that pulled out by a, bi by a non-biological dentist. Shit. Uh, that's okay. Worked on it. Got my lymph out and um, watched my regulation change. I kept doing it. My HRV kept improving. I had a, a home birth of my son, who is now nine, when I was 39 years old. And... Um, I'm now the pain-free, drug-free, flexitarian, lymph queen, fascia fairy, medical intuitive, biological investigator. Is that enough letters behind my name, Jerry? I created a podcast. I didn't actually create a podcast. Heidi Sullivan created my podcast. This is her legacy. BRMI is Heidi's legacy. And she said, you have a mouth and you have a way with words and you need to get out there and put your mouth where you're, you need to put the microphone in front of your mouth. And she created the podcast called The Beats for me, From My Heart to Yours. It was her tagline for me. And the picture that Sarah picked for my cover, she did not know, was the picture of the last day we ever saw Heidi when we were together in Baden Baden as the cover. Sarah's just super intuitive and took, picked that picture. It was amazing. <laughs> But that's why I'm so passionate about this. That's my before picture, before I found bioregulatory medicine. I had allergies and asthma my whole life. I was very depressed and very sad. I am not that same person at all. So we're not just here about fixing what's broken. We're, we're looking at how the body, we're assisting the body to heal. And please do not overtreat, over therapize, or overtake supplements. Ian has taught me, as has Flo Prezzo, as has Sauna Soul, how to be and how to be still and the power of silence. And it is palpable. Oh, wait, wrong way. Second case, quick story. So, this is a woman that you've all seen. She's been everywhere, tried everything. Um, but she had, a me uh, she had her dentistry handled biologically. She had a motor vehicle accident at 35. She had a couple C-sections. And she's done all the detox, all the IVs, everything. She's been diagnosed with fibromyalgia and exhaustion. And she had started a new detox protocol. And she started doing infrared saunas. And she got lymphedema in her lower legs. And she found me on the Lymphatic Summit, which is the power of social media. And she came to our center. I don't remember how far she traveled, a few hours to come see us for two days. And we did this testing, CRT, HIV, live blood, muscle testing, I did IMATE. We did two sessions of emotional release, two node releases, two flow presos, two foot baths, two advanced flow, which is like this crazy body work that I do that's been known to be called exorcisms, sound of soul, naso, and some PMF. Two days. Two days. De drainage over detox, drainage over detox, drainage, 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 okay? Parasympathetic tone was increased with Flopreso and Sound of Soul. We did fascia releasing and reconnecting, proper communication of the body for those two days. It does look like a miracle. And then we have our third story. Sarah M was 25 years old when we, uh, is now 25 years old. She has never had any amalgams. She's the third of three children, so she didn't get the biggest hit from her mom. She had some tattoos. Uh, she had acne throughout her whole teenage years, and she often didn't feel well, just bloating, fatigue, kind of, as she claimed, emotionally absent from life. Um, and then she had a tragic loss, meaning a suicide. And, you know, some of you hear, oh, she was 17 years old, she had a boyfriend for five years. 
this was part of her family. Their families were together. This was kind of like what you would call an arranged marriage in modern day age. Like they were betrothed and it crushed her and she's not a typical seven, she was never a typical person, but she was not a typical 17 year old. We had already known her mom and her brother and her sister. I'd heard about her because her sister came to the office the week that he was killed because she was dealing with, or be, that he died because she was so distraught about her wedding. And I was like, same thing y'all thought. I was like, it's your sister's boyfriend. Why are you so upset? I didn't understand how connected he was to the family until I got to know her. So when she came in at 20, three years after uh, he had killed himself, she had acne all over her face, her back, her chest. It was really extreme. She was a yoga instructor. She was a vegan, right? She was doing all the right things. So she came in. We did HRV, CRT, live blood tests, live blood, muscle response testing, and she was super committed. She did all of these therapies, rinse and repeat for two years, sometimes three times a week. She worked six jobs to come to our center. She traveled an hour and a half to come to our center. That's Sarah. So I have many more slides, but I know I'm out of time. I just want you all to know, whoops, 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 truly from my heart to yours. Thank you for being part of our group. Thank you for being part of our tribe. And please share this with the world.